Pickup trucks aren't known for their aerodynamics. In fact, when it comes to their design, aerodynamics is at the bottom of the list. In this video, we'll go through the aerodynamics of this Dodge Dakota, the good parts and the bad parts, then ways to improve it. This simulation was actually one we did for one of our customers, Joseph, who asked us about the aerodynamics of his truck. It was simulated at 65 miles per hour, which is about 105 kph. The color bar in this simulation is in meters per second because of universal SI units. If you'd like us to simulate your very own car, let us know here. The first thing we were really interested in was how the flow in the bed interacts with the rest of the flow. There are two sets of streamlines in this video. The colored ones are for the flow from up in front of the truck and show how the air travels over the truck. The white streamlines are the air inside the bed and extend both upwards and downwards. The downstream bits show how the air flows out of the bed, while the upstream bits show which parts of the flow enter into the bed. First of all, the color streamlines show that most of the flow skips over the bed. It just travels over the hood, then the windshield and roof, and then flows right over the white ones and downstream. That is good and bad. We'll cover why in more detail later, but just here, it's good that you're not pulling flow down into the bed, but it's bad in that the wake might be larger than it could be. It's a little surprising to me just how separated the white streamlines are from the rest of the flow. These white streamlines just circle around and around inside the bed and are very much alone to themselves. After swirling around about a million times, some of them find their way out and limp downstream. Interestingly, much of the flow behind the rear flap is from the bed too. The white streamlines flow over the lip and down into this little wake region. These streamlines indicate that the air that goes inside the bed really only comes from very close to the surface of the truck. We can see how there are these wire streamlines extending upstream over the cabin and hood. But there aren't any that are even like 10 or 20 centimeters above the surface, they're all very close. So the flow inside the bed is already fairly slow moving flow from upstream anyway. That's especially true when you see the wire streamlines around the side mirrors, the wakes are flowing right into the bed. Also, there's no flow going into the bed from underneath the bed level. Looking at the color streamlines, it kind of makes sense why we don't get any flow below that level dropping up and into the bed. The streamlines around the sides of the car seem to maintain a very constant height off the ground, so they can't just get into the bed. If you were sitting in the bed, the good news is that you wouldn't be getting blown around by air at free stream speeds, but lower speeds. Let's now move to some cut planes to see more details around the truck. This cut plane goes right down the center line of the truck, and the flow over the truck is pretty on par with a regular car. Some air crashes into the front and decelerates, that causes high pressure, but some goes into the engine bay, and the top and the bottom of the front are rounded quite nicely, so the air can travel over them without a problem. In fact, in that respect, the Dodge is better than a lot of cars here because of just how rounded it is. And some downforce is being produced underneath the front lip, look at how much low pressure there is. We've said it time and time again, a rounder underneath is better for drag, and you can still produce good downforce, Dodge accidentally proved it here. Perhaps one bad part of the front is the embossed perimeter of the grill. That comes with some drag at the top. That's because this surface is raised and just sticks into the flow. Making it more streamlined will reduce that drag a little bit. The cabin leaves a little to be desired because of how large and protruding it is. A lot of the flow has to redirect over the top, and that comes with quite a lot of high pressure on the windshield. For an average car, usually it has high pressure stopping around halfway up the glass. Here the high pressure extends a little further than that, and that means more drag can be created. Over the hood, there's a lot to be happy about. It is blended into the windshield nicely. There's a little bit of flow acceleration and low pressure here, but honestly, it's not really any worse than a regular car. So Dodge did a good job here. The roof is flat, which is good locally. What I mean by that is because it's flat, the flow after accelerating decelerates back to about free stream flow speed, but then stays at a very constant speed. That reduces how much drag you might get because there's less changing of the flow speed and hence less energy is lost to viscosity. That does come with a little low pressure over the roof and actually from this plane, it's easy to see why this Dakota produces over 19 kilos of lift. So about as much as a large sandwich. But this roof is way more important than just its local effects. In fact, it's more important than almost any other type of car's roof. The reason is because it determines how the air is going to flow over the bed. In particular, the rear edge of the cabin affects that a lot. In this plane, we see that the flow over the bed is almost perfect, almost. So there are three possible paths the flow can take. The first is that it overshoots the bed a lot. 
The flow goes over the roof and shoots off and clears the bed by a long way. The second possibility is that as the flow goes over the roof, it shoots off but falls short of the rear gate and lands inside the bed. The flow then hits the inside of the tower gate. The third option and least likely is that the flow travels over the roof and shoots off the back and flows down meeting the very back of the tower gate perfectly. Out of the three options, this is the best case. The reason is because for the first option where the flow clears the bed by a long way, we're still going to get a large wake at the back. The flow inside the bed is effectively now a pseudo wake. The second option where the flow lands inside the bed and crashes into the front of the tower gate is possibly the worst option because now you have fast moving flow dumping its energy into the tower gate's face. That creates very high pressure on that face and pushes the truck back more. As a result, much more drag is produced. The third option, where the flow just travels past the edge of the tailgate, is the best because there is no high speed flow going into the bed and crashing into the gate, and the wake behind the truck is minimized. As a result, the drag drops. Here the flow is almost perfect. You can see how these little lines come down, but just clip the top of the tailgate, so they fall short by a few inches. Just quickly, this simulation was done with open foam, and if you're interested in learning it, check out our courses here. Now looking at the pressure in this plane, we get high pressure here, which increases the drag. So this had almost perfect flow, but not quite. Because it clips the top of the tailgate, an additional wake is formed behind the truck too, so we get another drag producer. The easiest way to fix this issue, especially retroactively, is to flare the rear of the roof up just a little. That will kick the flow up a touch and it will travel further before coming down. It will then clear the gate. By playing with that little flare angle, you can dramatically reduce the drag of a truck. For those interested, we covered a few more details about this idea in this video here. From this angle, we can't see into the bed too well, so we have this exact same plane but now we're looking down more into it. We can really see just how much of the flow inside the bed circulates around as one general mass. Pretty much as soon as the flow over the roof hits the tailgate, it dives down and circulates back towards the cabin. We also get quite a lot of high pressure on the gate's face. Another surprising thing to me is how much low pressure there is inside the bed. That doesn't seem to suck in too much of the outside air. That seems to be the case because the outside air is about the same pressure, so there isn't too much of an incentive for it to flow into the bed. Behind the gate, because it is so vertical, it's just a flat wall, we expectedly get a strong wake and a lot of drag from it. But surprisingly, we get even more drag from the bed. In fact, from this video, it seems like most of the drag increase we do get from the pickup truck is from the bed. That's why bed covers would help reduce the drag. A regular bed cover won't completely get rid of that drag increase you get because the rear window of the cabinet is still exposed to a large wake. But if you get a bed cover that starts from about the roof line and goes to the tailgate, that will get rid of almost all this drag. The underneath is pretty good too, especially considering that there's no diffuser, so it's no wonder why this truck is producing lift. It is very much designed for function. Adding a diffuser to it would definitely reduce the lift, but also the wake size and even the drag. The tow bar is also increasing the wake size a lot. That comes with added drag. So if you don't need to tow anything on your truck, then perhaps removing the tow bar is a good idea. Moving over 51 centimeters, we get very similar flows. However, the bed flow is a little better here. Its wake isn't so large. That is partly because as you go closer to the size of the truck, you get fresher flow entering the bed. We can also see that the flow from the roof takes a different path, while in the center plane, it struggled to clear the gate. Here it clears it by a long way. That's reflected in the pressure plot, where we can now see low pressure on the gate's face instead of high pressure we saw earlier. This means this particular section is producing less drag. That also shows how the roof lip should be designed based on the point along the roof that you are. A greater flare near the middle is better than near the sides here. Looking at this plane, which is 80 centimeters to the side, one thing I'm really surprised by is just how much the mirror weight kicks up. I guess one okay thing about them is that they flow right into the bed, so that low energy flow is at least flowing into a region where it can't do as much harm, and that also means that when it does crash into the face of the bed, perhaps the tailgate, it doesn't have as much energy to increase the pressure on it, and hence the drag reduces. Now moving to the wheels, as expected, there are large wakes from them and drag. That's because this is a very functional vehicle, and having large wheelhouses helps accommodate wheel travel, as well as allowing you to have just larger wheels to get around. 
So while it might be tempting to move the wheels up into the wheelhouses more, that will certainly reduce the truck's functionality. Now, the Dodge designers were quite cunning like foxes because when we look at the rear wheel, there is obviously a large weight from it and it flows over the underside of the truck. But because it doesn't have a diffuser here, there isn't anything to really ruin. We just get an average wake. Contrasting that to regular cars with diffusers, the wheel wake really makes the diffuser underperform here. We don't get that problem here, so good work Dodge. We obviously still get a lot of drag here though. Let's now look from the top at 50 centimeters off the ground because we see something a little surprising. So wheels are major drag producers. They also produce large wakes. This plane shows how the flow hits the front wheel, but there's not that much of a wake from it. The reason I can see why this is occurring is because the tire's shoulder, so its edge, is very rounded. That makes it far easier for the flow to remain attached around it. Just a little thing like making this edge sharper would result in the flow separating around it and a much larger wake would form. And even though in this drag orbit there is so much drag coming from the wheels, with a sharper shoulder there would be even more, even if that's hard to imagine. The rear wheel is impressive, it is tucked into the wheelhouse well, the wheel arch also helps with that. As a result, the flow can move around it and without creating too much of a wake either. We've also seen this in other cars where when there's a substantial wheelhouse volume that the wheel doesn't take up. It really seems like the general trend of that approach is that because there is so much room for the air to move and escape from, it's not forced to blow up the sides. As such, smaller wheel wakes from the sides are seen. Moving up to 80 centimeters off the ground, we now see what happens in the bed. The flow's velocity is quite telling as to what's going on. So, the closer to the gauge you go, the faster the air is. Coupling this with the streamlines we saw earlier, the fresh flow enters the bed around the rear half, then it dives down as it gets sucked into the circulating flow. So initially we have quite fast moving flow, but as it gets engulfed with the other flow, it decelerates. That's not great for a couple of reasons. This pressure plot shows both of them. Because the fast moving flow goes to the back, it crashes into the rear face first. The pressure then increases as it dumps its energy into that face. Then as it slows, it moves forward. It is low pressure now. So not only do we get high pressure on the rear face, which increases the drag, we also get low pressure on the upstream face, which also increases the drag. We get a double hit here. All the more reason for the truck bed cover. An interesting idea would be to direct the flow coming in into the front of the bed to see if you could redirect that high speed flow so instead of hitting the rear face, you get it at the front. One thing I'm quite impressed with is the front actually. It may not seem like much, but the fact that the flow is attached around the edges is a little impressive. That's because when you have such a large and blunt face, a common problem is that the flow blows out around the edges and separates. You then get really large wakes around the edges before the flow reattaches somewhere downstream. Imagine the flow around a brick, that's effectively what can happen here very easily, but it doesn't. That's because the front is curved a little and the edges also have a slight roundness to them. Both of those factors help a lot. And likewise, the rear wake isn't too bad. I mean, it's bad, but not too bad considering just how blocky the truck is. The flow separates right at the rear edges, and in fact, this is a design philosophy that cars are really adopting now. If we move up to one meter off the ground now, we get the same flow features, but they're a little better generally. The front and sides have no wake, that is very impressive. The rear wake is a little smaller, that's because the flow is coming down behind the bed and reducing the wake size. In the bed, we get the same flow pattern where the flow near the back is faster, and that's because this region really seems to be where the flow is drawn into the bed. Now moving up to 1.3 meters off the ground, we're just above the bed now. The cabin wake is pretty decent, given how blocky it is, there isn't that much of a weight to it. It's actually more impressive than the weights from the side mirrors because while the cabin wake is larger, the cabin is much larger than the side mirrors. For how small the side mirrors are, they produce a lot of drag. Now in this plane, which is 1.6 meters off the ground, the flow on the sides looks bad. There is major flow separation around about one third down, but I don't think that this is from the cabin itself. I think that this is again because of the side mirrors because if you look at the streamlines you can see how much the flow angles up. So the wakes from the mirrors are not only bad locally but they have negative effects on the surrounding flow too. That larger wake around the sides flows downstream and makes the cabin wake larger too. 
streamlining those mirrors would reduce the drag. So overall, the Dodge Dakota is pretty good. Obviously being a pickup truck, it has a very bad drag coefficient coming at 0.44, but that's only because of a few key regions that are performing really badly. The bed itself, the side mirrors, and the large wheelhouses. Changing just those few things would drop the drag a lot. And Dodge did a good job with the roof line. It almost gets the flow angle perfect, but just a little short. Because of the lack of diffuser and general aerodynamic focus, it's not surprising that it produces 19.3 kilos of lift. But that's not a big deal here because the loading in the truck is variable anyway, so having a balanced truck lift-wise or having downforce isn't of much value. If anything, reducing the lift through simplifying the design would be better because that would reduce the drag too. But if you tried to make the truck produce less lift or even downforce through additions, that would just increase the drag coefficient further. So that's the aerodynamics of this pickup truck and how just a few changes could dramatically reduce the drag. If you're staying on YouTube, YouTube thinks you'll like this video, so check it out. Peace out, amigos.